Bearcat Sports Network. They're just generic can spots. <laughs> we were at St. Rose, and their mascot was the same height as all the junior high cheerleaders. I can't find the outlet under here. You mind if I plug into yours? I only need one. You need power? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. You know, okay, thanks. Ken Zimmerman, glad to have you back from the Highland Performance Arena on the campus of Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri. Tip off of the new season just about six minutes or so away as the Bearcats and McKinley rank number eight in the NAI preseason poll, Division One. We'll take on the number 14 ranked Lindenwood Lions. And uh, Kent, talking about these Bearcats a little more, we touched on the seniors in our last segment, a very solid junior class as well. Four, senior, uh, four juniors are back. And, uh, Two of those uh, players, one will see his name in the starting lineup tonight in Sean Arthur, and KP, Karen Competitor, we talked about his injury, will not play tonight, but I know he coach Harry State, I'm really counting on those guys to step up and uh, contribute in a big way this season. from the tip-off dinner on Sunday. He get, uh, the players all get up and speak. They go by class, and Sean gets up there, and uh, he says, uh, I can say on behalf of the team that we're tired of beating up on each other. We're ready to play on Friday. So hopefully that is the case tonight as uh, both teams are now out on the court. A very good crowd on hand here. It's the season opener for Lindenwood as well, and uh, uh, this arena seats a couple of thousand, and we're pretty uh, pretty full now, about 75%. They did have a t-shirt giveaway here. A lot of McKendry fans on hand. Good to see. We hope uh, we have a lot of fans listening on uh, the end here uh, of the Bearcat Sports Network. We're glad to have you along. As we're about three and a half minutes from tip-off. Scott Cummings and Ken Zimmerman with you during this pre-game show. Sophomore class from McKendry. Uh, returning sophomore, the lone returning sophomore, will move into the starting lineup this year. John Steppy, reigning co-AMC freshman of the year, and John really came on in the second half of the season, a deadly accurate three-point shooter when he gets on a roll. I know he hit five straight at one point in a game last year at Harris-Stowe, and uh, really matured as the season went on.
freshman you uh, alluded to just a moment ago, a real talented trio coming in. We've got the forward coming in from local uh, high school, Bree Central, and that is Gary Gaffner. Uh, guy needs to probably put on a few more uh, pounds to really bang inside, but a crafty player inside right now. And then the sharp shooter from Evansville, Indiana, Clinton Hoppy, who really impressed uh, in that first preseason game in this middle area. A very quick release for a freshman uh, from the outside, and then uh, who will be serving as a backup point guard tonight, Mike Spring, the lightning quick guard, as you talked about it from Waukegan High School. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's a guy that brings a lot of excitement on the court. And these three freshmen, they need to bring a different uh, piece of the game. And that's kind of one thing that head coach Harry Statham really talked about uh, in our preseason talk a few days ago. He's not one thing you can see on. These guys bring a different element every night. contributor, a thousand point score for the Bearcats, and uh, I'll tell you what, he's gotten a lot of good products out of Bree Central High School, and I think it's continued here with Garrett Gaffer. set to introduce to the crowd, so Kent, why don't you go ahead and run down tonight's starting lineups. Bearcat in the crowd tonight. Talked to him uh, before the game, Dan Moore, and his wife Amy May Moore, who played for the women's basketball team. Dan was on that Elite Eight squad in 1997, 6'5. Uh, started out as a guard, ended up as a forward, but uh, what a player he was for the Bearcat. <laughs> Well, 
jumping center for the Bearcats, it'll be Sean Hawkers. And for Linderwood University, it'll be David Kane, tip controlled by Linderwood, and the season is underway. Kramer Soderberg with the basketball, checked up top by Andy Wolf. Soderberg looks to drive right side, gets a step, the finger roll blocked off the backboard by Rockford, and out of bounds, and Sean collapsing on defense. Great anticipation. Bazell gets it over to King. Up top, he hits Soderberg. Now to Bazell once again. Bazell on the block. He gets it to Thompson. Thompson working against Rockers. He stands off the glass. And Linda will grab the 2 nothing lead. Quickly the other way. Steffi fires a three from the wing. Off the mark. Rocky, uh, Wolf tipped the rebound. Tried to get it to Copeland. And it ended up in the hands of Bazell. And going crashing to the ground is John Steffi's call for the reach -in. He tried to tip that one hand to Copeland. He'd have been even better served if he grabbed it with two hands and threw the bounce pass. Over on the left side, King has it for Linderwood up top to Thompson. Thompson, free throw line extended. Hits a cutter in the lane. Tried to get it through Soderberg. It's tipped away. Soderberg saves it on the baseline. Out to uh, Wolf guarding him. Now out to Bazell. Bazell drives the lane left side. Kicks it out on the wing for Rose. Rose checked by Steppy. High post to Thompson. Eight on the shot clock. Thompson checked by Rockers. Dribbles once. Picks it up. Hands it to Soderberg with three on the shot clock. 17 footers short. Rebound on the baseline. It's out of bounds. McKendry basketball. Good defensive position there for McKendry. Right side, Steffi has it near the wing, up top to Rocker, swings it left side to Wolf. Wolf dribbles to the baseline, forces it underneath to Copeland, turn around, jumper off the glass, and in, Brad Copeland, strong move underneath. We're tied at two, 18-28 left first half, Soderberg left side, bounces it on the block for King, working against Hobby, up and under move in the lane with the left hand, it's short, Hobby clears the rebound. Gives it off to Wolf in transition down the right side. Andy Wolf, top of the key, left side to Hobby, 23-footer on the way, in and out, rebound on the baseline to King. King to Soderberg, down the left side, over to Rose. Rose back out to Soderberg, up top to King, swings it right side, that is Bazell. Bazell checked this time by Steppy, entry pass tipped out of bounds, they tried to get it to Thompson, then it saves off of Thompson's fingers, Rock is forced to turn over. Tied at two, 17.55 remaining first half. Steffi has it, gets it up top to Rockers. Now left side over to Wolf. Top to Hobby, he fires a three and bingo. Eric Hobbins steps up top to key, hits his first points of the season. Five two, 17.36 and counting first half. Bazell down the right side, up off the glass, shot no good, but he was bumped on the way. He'll go to the line for two. It'll be the Bearcats' second foul. Brad Copeland has just picked up his first. Lindenwood is a team last season from the free throw line, a shade under 70%. First free throw for Bazell is good. First substitution, here comes Dave Ruckman, the sophomore of Freeburg, checking in for Copeland. Second free throw rims out. Rebound taken down by Rockers. Big body. Quickly flashing down the lane. Ruckman drives the lane. Shot is no good, but he was bumped on the way. Hobby forced it in from the wing. A good look, and the Bearcats go to the line. Ruckman's first free throw on the way is good. Rattles at home. Ruckman averaged just under 18 points a game as a senior at Freeburg High School. Pulled down eight rebounds, a contest as well for the Midgets. Second one on the way is good. Cats two for two from the line to start the season, and they build a 7-3 lead. Cats steal it on the inbounds as Hobby has it, pump fake in the lane, up off the glass, no good. Knocks the rebound over to the baseline, Wolf saves it. 
Wolf dribbles out between the circles, gets it to Steppy. Steppy up top to Ruckman, left side in front of the wood bench to Wolf. Wolf looks for a cutter, he's got Hobby on the elbow, shot is off the glass, no good, may have been a foul, no call, rebound to Thompson. Thompson gives it off to Soderberg, wide open lane, he drives in with the left hand and lays it in. There's that defense side off that time. 7-5 McKendry, 16-53 and counting first half. Wolf drives to the baseline. He's cut off by Soderberg up top to Steppy. Right wing to Hobby. Hobby up top to Ruckman. Swings it left side. Steppy, three on the way. Off the front iron, no good. Rebound tipped out. Saved to Rockers. Now Hobby fakes the three. He's got it top of the key. Gets it off right side to Ruckman. 15-footer is short. Doesn't follow the shot. Rebound to Bazell. Bazell down to the left side. He gets it to Rose. Gets a step. Lays it high off the glass. No good. But he'll go to the lane as he is not to the ground. Sean Rocker's whistle for his first. It's team foul number three. We've got a timeout on the floor. Harry Statham wants a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Cats controlling the tempo early. They were able to get some looks from the outside, but uh, you got to like the physical play on the inside. Cats not afraid to uh, take a two into wood right now. Bearcats right now shooting just 25%, one of four from three-point range. And they are two of two from the line. Lindenwood at 40% and one of two from the strike. Bearcats and Lindenwood tied at five in the rebound department. As at the line is Richard Rose for the Lions and he bounces home the first free throw. Second make here would tie this game at seven as Rose on the season last year, an 85% free throw shoot. Second one on the way is good. We're tied at seven. Lindenwood three or four from the strike. Between the circles, Ruckman has it, and we have an official's timeout. The shot clock did not start after the inbounds play. And now it's set to 29 seconds. They may uh, bump a few seconds more off of that 16.22 to go. And actually, the clock was stopped at 16.28 on the free throw, so it's right at 29. Let's we'll see if the officials decide to shave off a few more seconds. Heckert waiting to check in. Actually grew an inch over the season, bulked up a little bit in the weight room. Harry Statham really excited about the, the size that Heckard has put on in the offseason. Off the bench for Lindenwood. Checking in with number 23, that's Brandon Kunkel. He's a junior guard out of Redbutt. Hobby will end down in front of the Linda Wood bench. 16.22 to go. They keep 29 on the shot clock. Wolf has it on the inbound. Wolf dribbling between the circles. Check by Soderberg. Left side over to Hecker. Hecker gets a screen from Ruffin. Get it to the top of the key. Hands it to Hobby. Hobby around the arc. Gives it back to Hecker. Hecker picks up the dribble out top to Copeland. Right side to Hobby. 20 on the shot clock. For the That's shot clock frozen now. As Wolf gets it. And the drop step. No, they're going to say he shuffled the feet. Turnover McKenzie. For the Bearcats, that is their third turnover of the contest. You know what? Uh, they're talking about the shot clock. It, it froze at 20 seconds uh, during that last possession from McHenry. And you've got to wonder if maybe they'll turn off the shot clock here. Worked fine during the preliminary contest, which was won by Southern Nazarene University, the number two ranked team in the nation over Lindenwood Belleville. Uh, it was about a 20 point differential. It did not uh, catch the final score before they took it off the board. Lindenwood Belleville is McKendry's opponent tomorrow night at 6 p.m. We'll be on the air with a 5.45 free game show. The one thing we do know, it's tied 7-7. Cats got off to a 7-3 lead. Lindenwood scored the last four, and we've settled nothing through four minutes of play. Now the assistant athletic director coming over, taking a look uh, to see what's going on, maybe a faulty connection. We'll have to wait and see what goes on, but we're ready for action once again. As inbounding for Lindenwood, it will be Garrett Regas in the lineup. He gives it off to Soderberg. Soderberg down the left sideline across the timeline. Gets a screen, works around the right side, drives down the lane. Cross-court pass left side to Kunkel. 
Now with it is Alfred Nelson. Gets it out between the circles of Soderberg. 18 on the shot clock. Soderberg, the pump fake on the baseline. They're going to call an arm bar against the Bearcats. I think they're going to get Hobby for the foul. Fourth foul on the Bearcats. They're going to get Andy Wolf actually for the foul. That's his first. Four to one, the foul situation. Lindenwood with just uh, one so far. And once again, we're having a discussion about the shot clock. We have seen technical difficulties before with the shot clock. It wouldn't be anything new here. As we have 15.43 to go, a couple of substitutions. John Steppy set to check in, and we'll get to see for the first time Mike Springs, the freshman out of Waukegan. And he'll replace Wolf. Heckert gets a rest after a short break by John Steppy. We have a delay once again. Shot clock issue here at the Highland Performance Center. Scott Gunners, Ken Zimmerman, happy to have you along for the season tip-off. Hard to believe it's here already, Ken. You gotta have that break every now and then. Inbounds goes to Reed, gives it off to Nelson. Nelson hits the cutter, that's Soderberg. Soderberg worked up top against Mike Springs. Now dribbling between the circles, Soderberg drives right side, he's cut off by Springs, gets it out to Reed. Now Nelson will fire a three left of the key, back iron too strong, rebound to Copeland. Copeland gives it off to Springs, Springs across the timeline. Left side to Hobby, wide open three on the way, front iron no good, and rebound tracked down in the corner by Linderwood, that's Nelson. Skips it out left side for Bazell. Now in the corner, Kunkel's gonna fire up a three off the mark. Ruckman battles for the rebound and struck with his feet. Got off balance, couldn't get his footing and took the extra step. Thompson and King check back in for Lindenwood, and also we see for the first time Michael Booz. He's a junior, or a freshman guard out of Wisconsin. 15 08 to go first half. We're tied at seven. McHenry and Lindenwood in an NAI top 25 battle. Let's get the inbounds to King, who hands off to Bazell. Bazell running the point with Soderberg off the floor. Works it in front of the McHenry bench. Bazell working up top against Copeland, looks to get a step on the baseline. He's cut off underneath, kicks it in the corner to Kunkel, working around the Booz now. Right wing over to Thompson, underneath to King. King working against Hobby, the an off balance row on hand, no good, good defense by Hobby. Gives it off to Hobby now, or Ruckman did, between the circles to Ruckman, now to Springs. Springs standing near the hack logo on the court. They swing it left side as we got a shot clock issue once again as it's frozen at 31. Hobby looked like he was gonna have a chance to penetrate down the left side, and this is about the fourth time he's had a stoppage in play for the shot clock. And, and actually one of the officials visibly frustrated right in front of us is they had to blow the whistle. Now they're calling both coaches to mid-court and they're probably going to end up turning the shot clock off. like the catch one the toss because they'll have a good block in the second half. On the block, left side, Rockers tried to drop step against Thompson and shuffle the feet as we were back underway. 14.34 to go first half. We've settled nothing tied at seven as they've turned out the clock completely to the right side. And now we're back underway. Bazell across midcourt, working right side against Copeland. Picks up his dribble, tries to bounce a high post to Thompson, kicked out of bounds by Copeland. Yeah, two for nine for McKendry from the field. Linda with a two for eight. 
14-18 to go. First half, high post. Thompson has it working against Rockers. Turn around off the bank, no good. Rebound knocked out of bounds. It'll be McHenry basketball as King battling with Rockers knocked it out of bounds. Yep, the one, the one basket we know that Lindenwood scored. Soderberg was able to drive down the lane as the Bearcat defense collapsed. Steffi kicks it out left side to Hobby on the wing to Wolf. Wolf up top to Steffi, gets it free throw line to Copeland. He hands to Hobby, drives the lane, kicks it out to Steffi. Three from the wing, bingo, nothing but net. Ten seven, McKendry, 13-46 to go first half. Up top between the circles, Bazell has it. Gets a screen, works around the right side, pulls up from 12. It's short. Rebound taken down by King. Strong side. He collapses to the ground. Hobby has it from McKendrick. Gives it off to Wolf. Cats in transition. Right side to Steffi. Bounces a baseline for Copeland. Dribbles down, lays it up and in. Cats with five in a row. Twelve seven. McKendry, 13 20 to go first half. Bazell gets it out to Kunkel. Kunkel near the scorer's table. Looks for a screen as Steppy able to fight through it. Up top they get it to Booz. Booz working against Wolf. Now dribbles back out, 14 on the shot clock. Looks to drive. The runner, reverse layup, no good. Rockers clears the rebound. Hands it off to Wolf. Transition again for McKendrick. Wolf bounces it in the lane for Copeland who lays it up. No good. Tips it no good. Gets his own board. Pump fake against a double team blocked by King and the rebound to Kunkel. Kunkel takes it, he's cut off by Wolf, out to Thompson, fakes the three, drives to the free throw line, hands it off to Kunkel. Kunkel sets his feet, gives it back to Bazell, who resets the offense with 12.37 to go. Cats miss a golden opportunity to cash in on the offensive end. Thompson's going to fire a 16-footer, it's short, rebound taken down by Wolf. Cats with a three on four, but Wolf's going to drive down two past two defenders, high off the glass, no good, rebound to Booz. Booz with a three on two, gets it right side to Brazell, misses the three, King there for the rebound and put back. Twelve nine, McHenry with the lead, approaching the 12-minute mark of the first half. Copeland has it on the baseline. His shot blocked away by King, rebound to Thompson. <laughs> Booz sets up the offense. He gets the play call from Coach Soderberg, who wants a timeout. 11.50 to go first half. It'll be wholesale subs either way. We're going to step out for a quick break. You're listening to McHenry University Basketball on the Bearcat Sports Network. Everyone takes a 60-second timeout. Out of the timeout, Soderberg has it for Lindenwood. He gives it off to Booz. Booz drives down the left side of the lane. They work it around now to Rose. Back between the circles to Nelson, who's in the lineup. Gives it off to Rose. He's cut off on the baseline by Abby. Now back out to Booz. Five on the shot clock. Lindenwood, 30 feet from the basket. Soderberg drives down. Shot, pump fake off the glass. No good. Rebound tip. And Ruckman had position. They're going to call you over the back against Garrett Reed. No, I think they're going to say Ruckman's called. Looked like Ruckman had position. Instead, he gets whistled for his first. Booze between the circles, dribbling, working against Steph. He gets it on the wing to Soderbergh. He fakes the three. Up top against Wolf. Looks to drive down the lane. Reverse layup with the left hand is good. And Soderbergh has four points. It is 12-11 in favor of McHenry, 11-15 to go first half. Right side, that's Steffi directing traffic, looking for a cutter up top. That's Copeland, left side to Wolf. Wolf bounces a baseline for Ruckman, back out to Wolf. He'll fire a three from the corner. It's short, an air ball. Rebound taken down by Rose. Gives it off to Soderberg, across the timeline quickly. He pulls up as he gets Wolf to go crashing to the ground, misses the three, rebound tipped out to Copeland. Cats in transition as Steffi has it on the right wing. Up top to Wolf, swings it. No, both wanted to go to Copeland. Now gets it out to Ian Ridge, who's in the ball game for McKendry. Ridge bounces high post for Copeland. Back out to Ruckman. Now Wolf has it right side with 19 on the shot clock. Steffi has it, swings it left wing over to Ridge. Back to Ruckman, tried to hit a cutting Ridge, and it's thrown away, taken away by the Lions. That's Reed. Soderberg across the timeline. 10-13 to go first half. Catch lead by 1-12-11.